Hello viewers, in this video we are going to learn about class hierarchy concept in entity relationship model. Class hierarchy organizes structurally similar entities into subclasses and superclasses through inheritance using is a symbol. If we declare A is a B, it means that every subclass entity A is also considered to be superclass entity B. Okay. Uh, if you look at this example, where class hierarchy is constructed with three entity sets, employee entity set, Harley employees and contract employees entity set. In this, employees entity set is a superclass entity set or it can also be called as parent entity set. And Harley employees and contract employees entity sets are called as subclass entity sets or child child class entity sets okay here these three entity sets are connected through is a symbol okay so it indicates that employees is a parent entity set and harley and contract employees entity sets are child class entity set okay it can be read like this harley employees is a employees the meaning of this is that every entities in the harley employees entity set is also considered to be the entities of employees entity set in an organization. Whereas coming to here, contract employees is a employees. Okay. So, it, uh, what is the meaning of this? Every entity in contract employees entity set is also considered to be the entities of employees entity set in an organization. Okay. Um, so, this is what the meaning of using is a symbol. Okay. Since we used is a symbol, um, here uh, inheritance concept takes place, right? So, what is mean by inheritance? Uh, if child class occurs the properties of parent class, that concept is known as the inheritance concept. Okay. So, accordingly, if we take Harley employees entity set, it is the subclass entity set, right? So, it occurs all the three attributes from its parent entity set okay so that's why now in addition to its two attributes it can also takes the three attributes from employees entity set totally it takes five attributes similarly contract employees entity set also it takes four attributes uh, what are the four here three attributes are there its own attribute contract id is there so totally it takes four attributes okay so uh, is a symbol is used to achieve inheritance okay let us now discuss the reasons for using is a symbol. Okay. Uh, is a symbol is used to add descriptive attributes specific to a subclass. Okay. You can understand this reason if you observe this example. Here you can notice uh, the Harley employee subclass. Uh, it takes the attributes only which are applicable to it. So, which is the attribute not applicable to it? Contract ID is not applicable to it. Right. So, uh, it is not um, used for Harley employees. Okay, it takes only attributes that are specific to it. Okay. Um, and coming to contract employees, it takes only four attributes that are applicable to it and it doesn't take the other two attributes, Harley wages and has worked, which are not applicable to it. Okay. So, we could able to achieve this uh, only using the ESA symbol. And uh, coming to the another reason for using ESA symbol, it is used to identify entities participating in a relationship. Okay. Since we used in this example is a symbol, we could able to identify uh, how an employee entity set is a super class uh, entity set and uh, Harley employee and contract employees are subclass entity set. So, we could able to identify this relationship since we used is a symbol. Okay. Let us now discuss the generalization and specialization approaches which are applicable in class hierarchy concept. Okay. Coming to generalization, it is the process of creating a super class by combining two or more subclasses if they have some attributes in common in the hierarchy. Okay. Since we start this process from the subclass and we create a super class, this concept is known as bottom-up approach. Okay, let us now discuss how we got this uh, class hierarchy through generalization approach in detail in this subsequent slide. 
Um, this according to generalization approach, uh, the process starts from the subclasses, right? So initially we had these two subclass entity sets, Holly employees and contract employees entity set. There, um, Holly employees it takes five attributes and contract employees entity set it takes four attributes. If you observe these two entity sets, you can notice uh, SSN name lot uh, occurs in both the entity sets. So uh, these three attributes can be used for creating parent entity set. So let us move these three attributes to the parent entity set now. Okay, these three attributes are moved now and uh, parent entity set also created now that is named as employees entity set. Okay. So let us now connect uh, these three entity sets through is a symbol. Okay. So now we have connected these three entity sets through is a symbol. Okay. So now employees entity set is the parent entity set which is created from subclasses. Um, since these uh, two subclasses commonly had three attributes in common between them, uh, we could be able to create the uh, superclass entity set. Okay. Let us now discuss the specialization process. Specialization is the process of creating subclasses from superclass. By identifying the subsets of superclass that share some special attributes. Okay. Since in specialization, we start the process from parent class and we create the child class entity set. This approach is known as the top down approach. Let us now discuss how we got this class hierarchy by applying specialization process in detail in this subsequent slide. Okay. According to specialization process, uh, the process starts from the parent class, right? So initially we had this parent class entity set which takes six attributes. Okay. Uh, and just assume that there are some entities in this entity set that takes values only for the five attributes SSN, name, lot, holly wages and has worked. And they do not take any value for contract ID. Okay. So uh, accordingly, uh, there are some other set of entity sets that takes values only for SSN, name, lot and contract ID and they do not take any value for has worked and uh, uh, holly wages. Okay. So after identifying uh, these um, specific properties, uh, we could able to move the um, specific attributes that are applicable to the uh, subset of entities and uh, we can also be able to create the um, child class entity sets now. So accordingly, let us move the Harley wages and has worked to uh, set of entities which are applicable to it and a contract ID attribute can be moved to the set of entities uh, to which it is applicable. Okay. So now uh, these two attributes are moved, moved to one of the um, one set of entities and um, contract ID is moved to another set of entities uh, which takes only value for it and uh, let us assign names for these uh, entity sets as Harley employees and contract employees. Now we got um, uh, three entity sets. Um, okay, let us now connect these three entity sets uh, with is a symbol. Okay. Uh, finally, this class hierarchy it looks like this. Okay, since uh, in specialization we have started the process starting from the super class and we created the uh, child class entity sets. This approach is known as top down approach. Let us now discuss the covering constraint and overlap constraint which are applicable on class hierarchy. Coming to covering constraint, it determine whether or not an entity in the superclass must belong to at least one of the subclasses or not. Okay. Uh, if we take an example, if we apply this concept on this example, either every entity in the employee entity set must belong to either Holly employee entity set or contract employee entity set. If the answer is yes, there exists covering constraint where covering constraint is graphically represented by drawing a thick line between the parent entity set and is a symbol. Okay. Whenever there is a covering constraint present, 
it means that every entity in the parent entity set must be present in one of its subclasses come to overlap constraint it determine whether or not a superclass entity can belong to more than one subclasses or not okay if we take a entity john in employee entity set either he can be both an wholly employee entity or uh, and contract employee entity if the answer is yes coming to overlap constraint it determine whether or not a superclass entity can belong to more than one subclasses so if we take a uh, coming to overlap constraint it determine whether or not a superclass entity can belong to more than one subclasses so if you apply the overlap constraint in this example if we take an entity john coming to overlap constraint overlap constraint determine whether or not a superclass entity can belong to more than one subclasses okay we apply uh, overlap constraint in this example um can john employee entity be both an only employee as well as contract employee entity set if the answer is yes coming to overlap constraint it determine whether or not a superclass entity can belong to more than one subclasses Okay. Uh, if we apply overlap constraint in this example, let us take John employee in employee entity set, and he be both an wholly employee entity as well as contract employee entity. So if the answer is yes, then there exists overlap constraint. Usually, overlap constraint can be drawn by drawing an arc. Uh, between the line that connects the subclass entity sets and e is a symbol okay, whenever there is a there is an arc exists it indicates that entities in the parent class entity set can be present in more than one subclass entity set okay uh, students in this video we learnt about class hierarchy concept If you find this video useful to you kindly subscribe this channel thanks for watching